scanning for audio. Welcome to the Tin Dog Podcast, this time talking about The Prisoner, Volume 2, from Big Finish. Yes. Now, for those of you with long memories, you will know that there was a competition run by Big Finish last year when The Prisoner, Volume 1 was released. Now, the prize for this competition was for the best review of The Prisoner, Volume 1. But the prize, the prize was to get to go to the studios. Now, I was kind of hoping that my review, which was admittedly glowing, would come in quite high up and win, the same way that I constantly hope to win the Paul Sprague Memorial Prize, and don't. You see, I kind of really, really want to go to Big Finish. Part of me wants to go when they're recording my stories, but I really do want to attend a recording session of some sort. It's a small dream, but it's mine. And, of course, I didn't win that competition. So what I thought this time is, and bear with me, I'd make this the single most exciting review ever. My plan was to record each individual part of this review. It's a four-disc box set, and to do each individual one in a different location. I was going to do it on the top of the car park that's in Get Carter inside Tim Peake's space capsule, don't ask, and that kind of thing. Underwater, that kind of... in a helicopter, on top of a cliff, all in exciting locations, which, of course, you'd have to imagine. My next plan, beyond that, was to try and fake that using a load of sound effects. But then I realised something. You don't actually care about that, do you? What you want is for me to record a nice review about the stories, what I thought about them, some opinions, some pithy remarks, and then you can go on your merry way after you've heard after you've heard the trailer. All perfectly reasonable. So I promise there'll be no exciting locations, there'll be no hanging out of aeroplanes or inside giant secret hangars. No, this is just me and you having a chat. About The Prisoner Volume 2. I will, however, be doing this one story at a time because I want to savour this box set. Yes, I know it came out a few weeks ago, but that's all right. I'm sure Big Finish won't mind me talking about it now. So, one story per time. And I've just listened to I Met a Man Today. It's adapted from Many Happy Returns. That's a TV story. But obviously, this is... This is a reimagining, no, a parallel universe prisoner where it exists on audio. Yes, you've got some of the original ideas and concepts from the original series, but there's stuff you just can't kind of do these days. Now, admittedly, it's set in 1967, but there are flashes of modern technology which are gloriously confusing. And I've got a feeling that at the very end of this, Nick Briggs is going to give us the ending to the prisoner that isn't like the TV ending. Which will, of course, divide fans. But you know what? The original ending divided fans left, right and centre. I'd like to point you all in the direction of the In the Village podcast that's going on, which is reviewing The Prisoner as it was broadcast 50 years on. It's a gloriously brilliant podcast, and I'm sure you can find it. I'll put a link in the show notes, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Right now, I'm talking about I Met a Man Today. Now, here's the synopsis, and then I'll see what I can talk about. Exhausted, after a daring escape from the village, Six returns to London to find a woman living in his home. Despite being fearful that this could be yet another trick by those who run the village, he dares to take the risk and starts to get to know her. Meanwhile, those running British intelligence have their own agenda. Now, 
When I was a kid, this was one of my favourite episodes of the actual TV Prisoner. I loved the fact that he'd finally made it home. Yes, I know for a fact that most of this episode is in silence, which was hugely important to me as a kid. I was watching this going, oh, he's just doing stuff. Yeah, he does a daring escape, but he wakes up and everyone's vanished. It's not like anyone's going to stop him trying to escape. No, he's managing to escape from the village by building a raft and getting back to, well, Blighty. He knows that it's real. It's not like one of the other times in the other episodes. This ain't no hologram, my friends. It's all as real as it gets on this program. Let's face it, subjective reality is a definite cause celeb when it comes to this lot. So, he's made it home. He's found someone living in his house with his car. Someone who has a backstory about, well, their previous husband and a housekeeper. And there's a woman who's rather nosy from the pub. And of course, those at British intelligence want to torture him in almost exactly the same way that the people at the village did. He's now a liability. He may have been broken. He may not. They just don't know. This is the sort of third man Philby type thing that was going on in the 60s and probably goes on even today. You just don't know who to trust. So you trust yourself. But even in the case of the prisoner, is that too much? That's why the prisoner is so good. Yes, calling him six is bad and so on, but we'll have to do that. Mark Elstob is just glorious. If you need a tagline, that's the one you should use. Because his number six is McGowan, but it's not. It's better, but it's more personal. He's more violent, which McGowan's character wasn't. And that's what works. I know Magoon was offered the role of James Bond at least twice, but you know what? He's so much better as being six. It's soul-destroying to know that he's not around and that we won't be able to interrogate him on the exciting world of podcasts and find out exactly what he had in mind. The idea of a DVD commentary would be glorious and lost on us. It's just not going to happen. Story one is great, but obviously, just like the TV episode, it's going to end up being dumped back in the village. Now, in the TV episode, he's flying over what could be France, and he circles it on the map where the village could be. But in this story, those plot holes are nicely sewn up. Ah, we're back in the village, and we know where we stand, and there's another new number two. In a recent podcast, Nick was asked about casting, well, the castings of number two. And he said, rather correctly, that it depends on how it's written. Now, when I'm writing something, I've usually got somebody in mind to play the parts. It helps me create the characters in front of me. But if you're writing something and then only afterwards do you come, right, who does it sound like and then who's available? Then that's a really technically good way of working. But you know what? This probably isn't going to come across as the best review of The Prisoner Volume 2. It's not exciting. But it is honest. So perhaps we're all winners in that one. Except, of course, I didn't get to go to the filming of a recording. Anyway, I'll let you go. I'll listen to story number two and report back then. So, back in a moment. Welcome back. Time for 2.2, Project 6. Now, it says on the big British website that it's adapted from A, B and C. Here's the synopsis. Six is now certain he can't trust anyone. Any food or water in the village could be laced with chemicals to alter his mental state. Going nil by mouth in an attempt to prevent potential drugging, he finds himself dazed and confused by hunger and dehydration. And a prisoner in a secret laboratory makes some unnerving claims, claims that lead to the identity of number one. Now, it's difficult to talk about these things without giving away spoilers and plot twists. Because, let's face it, it's the prisoner. The eventual revelations that's going to come, or may not come, or may never ever come at the end, well, they're going to come our way eventually. This is story number two, and they're already talking about the identity of number one. A, B and C is a great TV episode, but I am trying to completely separate TV prisoner from audio prisoner. And that's probably for the best. They're very different creatures. For a start, the pacing and the knowingness of the audience is so much higher 
here on audio. We're constantly guessing, let's face it, we're all prisoner fans, so we're in on the fast track. We know what's going on. We know how narrative works. We know the original stories that have influenced quite heavily these audio adaptations. So every time they veer away from the plot, we're intrigued. Every time they give us another snippet, or every time there's a certain certain meta-textual gag, yeah, and you'll know it when you hear it, well, that's just for us. One definitely not spoilerific aspect of the second story is Nicholas Briggs's cameo. It's nice to appear in your own work, always is. His cameo is appearing as a person who lives in the village, number 99. Is this a reference to the 99 Cornet, as discussed in great depth on the Big Finish podcast? For this, I know we may never ever find out the answer. It's always going to keep you guessing. That's the point of The Prisoner. And that's what you've got here in spades. Thoroughly enjoyable, thoroughly enjoying it. I can't fault it. Performance-wise, just captivating. And plot-wise, simply intriguing. Yes, you're with the prisoner when he says it's all in his own mind. But are you sure it's all in his own mind, or just most of it, or some of it? What's really going on? Well, that's the $64 million question. Either way, superb so far. And moving on to number three, Hammer into Anvil. Bizarrely, and actually adapted from the TV episode of the same title. Back in a moment. Hello, I'm back. Not that you think I've been anywhere, because this obviously recording followed on from the last one, but I have been away. I've been busy, but I have listened to story number three from the Prisoner Box set, and this one's called Hammer into Anvil, adapted from the TV episode of the same name. Now, admittedly, this is actually one of my favourite TV episodes. No, seriously, it is. So, here's the synopsis that you've got on the audio description. For the new number two, the gloves are off. His mission to break Six, saying he must either be the hammer or an anvil. But Six has a plan to exploit a weakness in the system. Yep, that says a lot. But basically, it's a cat and mouse game, a psychological terror game. It's more proof. It does feel a lot more like um, your classic spy story. But that's all right. You need these in order to distract you from the audio assault that can be some of the other episodes. And admittedly, it finishes on a cliffhanger, which leads into part four. Is it a worthy adaptation? Yes, it doesn't feel like an adaptation at all. It doesn't feel clunky or anything. It's just a nice, smooth transition from the visual to the audio with extra layers of big Finnish prisonerness. Now, I know there are pictures of the guy playing number six on the front of the CD, but I just can't stop picturing McGowan. Is that a problem? I suppose so. But you know what? It's fine. It truly is. I can live with it. I so can, because these performances are glorious. So I don't want to spoil anything, and I suspect my review of part four will be even shorter because of the nature of the story. I'll listen to that and I'll report back, but I do need to say that this is a great adaptation. I'm thoroughly enjoying the box set, and if you're even wavering about buying this, you will be wanting it. But of course you can't own everything, but if you're a Prisoner fan, of course you need this. Back in a moment. Which brings us to the last of the four with Living in Harmony. Not adapted from the TV episode of the same title. Absolutely not. I've got a problem coming. But here's the synopsis and I'll discuss my problem in a moment. Six finds himself in entirely unfamiliar circumstances. He is also confronted with the seemingly impossible return of number nine. But worst of all, he is faced with a deadly choice just how much is his freedom really worth? Now, the problem with living in harmony, which I always mistook for the episode Do Not Forsake Me or My Darling, which makes sense if you've seen the TV show, because obviously that's the one that's set in an alternative world with a cowboy. Because that's the one set in an alternative world take on the prisoner where you've got the same narrative structures, and God forgive me for saying the word memes, taking place. 
So that's what I'm expecting. We're expecting a parallel storyline, but this is Nick Briggs's prisoner. It's marvellous. It's truly great. It's a worthy addition to the prisoner canon. Yes, it's not the TV show, but you know what? That doesn't matter here. What matters is just how great it is on its own. Imagine a parallel universe where this is the prisoner, where it was never made for TV, but it was made for audio. That's how great this is. So, my problem. My problem is that I can't discuss this episode. Not without giving you spoilers. Not without giving you, well, a rundown of exactly what's happening. So with that, I'll have to leave it there. Because, let's face it, it's the prisoner. If it made sense, it wouldn't be the prisoner. If it all fitted neatly together with with an answer, then that's fine. Hopefully... Very much, hopefully, there'll be another series, and I'll be waiting. And as I've finished every single one of these podcasts, and you know what? It doesn't matter that I'm not underwater, or jumping out of an aeroplane, or on a spaceship. What matters is that I've enjoyed these audios. And you know what? I've always finished every single one of the Tin Dog podcasts with the same phrase, and the same phrase comes from the prisoner. So until next time be seeing you. I met a man today, an extraordinary man. Please state your code. ZM73. It looks just the same. The car? Well, good. I didn't know the previous owner you. I mean, my... Someone bought it for me. Many happy returns. What's your name? What's yours? Kate. Kate Butterworth. How do I know I can trust you? How do you know you can trust anyone? I don't. What have you told her? None of your business. I don't quite understand. You were in a village, you didn't know where it was, and you didn't want to be there. Don't worry. It'll all be over soon. What's your name? No names. Just just numbers. Six. Six. Number six. Everybody wants to tell their story, don't they? (laughs) This is beginning to sound like an interrogation. Danvers, is this your idea of a joke? No, sir. Mark Stein just called. ZM73 is back and he wants to see you. God. If you had to escape from this village, was someone keeping you there by force? Yes. So, how did you get away? I told you, it was empty. You just woke up one morning and everyone had gone? Yes. Even the people trying to keep you there? Everyone had gone. Turn it off! Whatever this is supposed to achieve, turn it off! What is the village? Don't you know? Where is it? I don't know. All I know is that I escaped from it. How? I'll admit it. I'm fascinated to know your story. You want to turn my life into a book? Would that be such a bad thing? Everyone has a story. I don't tell stories. Why not? Everyone tells stories. Not me. I've got nothing to say. So you have a secret? It's all secret. There is no village. It's a Soviet fiction. Your cover story. He died in the service of his country. That's all they'd say. I can assure you that none of us has heard of this village place. Why should I believe you? Why should we believe you? Because you have some proof that I'm telling the truth. Not much proof. Precisely. We need more information from you, said M73. Information. We want information. 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 Did you tell them why you resigned? No. Why not? Because it was none of their damned business, and it's none of yours either. 5 5 Delta Tango 6 to tower, now on course. Over. I met a man today, an extraordinary man. Well, certainly a man with an air of mystery about him.
That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>